Look at these huge faces. It's as if they're emerging from the depths of the earth. You're looking at the Mount Rushmore National Memorial in the United States, one of the world's most famous sculptures. But how did they manage to build it directly out of the side of a mountain? Let's go and see! Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. The site chosen for the monument, Mount Rushmore, is a granite mountain located in the Black Hills, South Dakota. It stands at a height of 1,765 meters. The reason it was selected is due to its characteristics. The rock that the mountain is made of, in fact, is strong enough to support the sculpture and prevent it from collapsing, and already at a preliminary phase, geologists estimated that it would only erode 25 millimeters every 10,000 years. In short, we are talking about a very hard type of rock. The construction of the Mount Rushmore sculpture began in 1927 and was completed in 1941 under the guidance of Gutson Borglum, a sculptor of Danish origin who had already worked on similar projects. During the preparatory phase, Borglum constructed a scale model of the monument he wanted to create and produced highly detailed drawings to guide the workers in their shaping of the rock. If you look at the model, and here it is, you can see that the heads were originally supposed to have bodies as well. The sculpture was supposed to be like this. However, it was such a complex work of art, and at a certain point funding ran out, so construction stopped after the completion of the four faces, which reach a total height of about 18 meters. Borglum and his team began sculpting the four great American leaders by removing a large amount of rock with explosives to create a smooth, flat surface on which the shape of the faces was marked out and then carved. Once the outlines of the faces were drawn, the team, composed of miners, sculptors and climbers, descended from the top of the mountain to do their work. The workers were literally hanging over the void, sitting in so-called bosun chairs, which were harnesses with incorporated seats from which they carved the rock of the mountain using chisels, pneumatic drills and explosives. Approximately 450,000 tons of rock were extracted from the mountain and can still be seen at the base of the sculptures. The construction of Mount Rushmore was an unprecedented technical feat for the time, requiring the work of over 400 workers and artists. However, the construction of the monument was not without its difficulties and challenges. The mountain is in fact located in an area where the climate is not a particularly favorable one for outdoor work. Throughout the carving process, the team faced difficult weather conditions like the winter cold and snowstorms, as well as enduring long hours of work, often at the mercy of the wind. Despite this and the associated dangers, fortunately no serious accidents occurred during the 14 years that the monument was a construction site. After removing all the excess rock, the team started carving the intricate details of the president's faces. This phase was conducted using traditional chiseling techniques that necessitated a great deal of patience and meticulous attention to detail, as it entailed eliminating solely the quantity of rock that was required to form the contours of the faces and intricacies such as the nostrils and ears. The team that created the monument was so precise in sculpting that by working at different depths on the surface, they managed to create a light and shadow effect that gives great depth to the sculpture. For instance, have a look at the eyes. They appear truly alive. This is because although they are carved holes, in each eye a granite cube was left to simulate the reflection of light on the iris. Well, here I want to pause for a moment because in those eyes there's so much of Italy. Yes, the effect was made by the head carver who was an immigrant from Friuli. His name was Luigi Del Bianco. Thanks to his skills as a sculptor, he was able to give the faces so much expressiveness that they captivate the observer. Going a bit off topic, here's a fun fact about the Mount Rushmore monument. There's a secret room in the mountain located right behind the president's heads. This room was meant to be a time capsule of American history, but it remained unfinished due to insufficient funding. Inside, it was meant to be richly adorned with mosaics and contain busts of famous Americans, but unfortunately, none of this ever came to fruition. In 1988, however, a titanium box covered with a casing made of granite was placed inside with panels engraved with the history of Mount Rushmore. However, the room is inaccessible to the public. The idea of sculpting Mount Rushmore was initially conceived with the intention of making the location an attractive destination for tourists. But over time it has become a genuine symbol of freedom for Americans. The monument is indeed also known as the Shrine of Democracy, 
and it portrays the faces of four renowned American presidents, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. These four together represent the birth, development, and national stability of the United States of America. On the other hand, unfortunately for the Native Americans of the area, who were called the Lakota Sioux, as well as for many other tribes, the monument is the embodiment of the loss of their lands and the injustices suffered since the establishment of the United States government. Over the years, the structure of the site has seen developments such as the construction of a visitor center, parking lots, and a museum dedicated to those who designed and built the sculpture. Inside the museum, you can admire all the tools that were used as well as the original plaster models. Every year, the monument attracts about 2 million visitors. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you for the next video. Always here on Geopop Everyday Science.